Hello and welcome back to Miss Finance. Today we're going to have a look very quickly over some prepayments and accruals. So we're going to do a very quick five minute video covering the very basics of prepayments and accruals to help you get your head around it. We're going to go through seven questions in total just to check your understanding at the end. So first thing that we need to understand is that a prepayment is something that we have paid for but not yet used. And an accrual is something that we have used but not yet paid for. So an example of a prepayment is where you've got a cost that's currently sat in your profit and loss account, such as gas. So we might have £10,000 worth of gas sat in our profit and loss account, but that gas actually relates to after the year end. So none of this relates to our year end, it relates to after the year end. So what we need to do is we need to strip out this cost. Because we all know that in the profit and loss account, an expense or cost of any kind or debits, then this is a plus. So in order to get rid of this and create a prepayment, so to shove this 10 grand onto this balance sheet over here, we need to post the journal. And the journal would be to credit gas, £10,000. So that would remove this. So if we just create two lines here, so prepayments, and instead we would move this to the balance sheet by debiting prepayments. So prepayments sat in the balance sheet is an asset. And if you want to look at it more closely, you'll find that this is a current asset because it's most likely due in less than 12 months. So if a prepayment was only to be released in more than one year, that would be a non-current asset, but most prepayments are current assets. So if we had a look at accrual in comparison to this, let's just copy this data down here. There we go. What we would find is that we don't have those costs. So whereas with a prepayment, you've got the costs currently sat in the profit and loss account, we don't have any costs, but we need costs. So say for instance that our period end is the 31st of December 2020, but we don't receive an invoice for the gas that we are currently using. So we know we're using gas in, in the company, but we only receive an invoice, say, in February for the costs that relate to December. But we know that on average, the gas costs about £5,000 a month. So currently, we have nothing anywhere in our accounts for this £5,000 that we know, we know we're going to get billed. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these costs into here. Now to do that, we need to debit the gas nominal in the profit and loss account with the £5,000 that we expect we're going to have to pay. And instead, we create an accrual on the balance sheet of £5,000. So because it's got to be a debit in the P&L account, we need to credit accruals. So negative on the balance sheet. So if you see here now, we've got these costs that are sat in gas of £5,000. And over here on accruals, we now have a liability due of £5,000. So it's as simple as that when you're dealing with accruals and prepayments. But the type of questions that they'll ask you in an exam is that they've received an invoice on such a date that covers a certain period. And they might have that in days or months. So these examples above are in months. But if we were to look at another example with a prepayment and we said that, OK, we've got an invoice this time that covers November and December. Now, we know that in November there are 30 days and in December there are 31 days. So in total, we have 61 days over that period. Now, say that our period end or year end was actually November 2020. So at the moment, we have an invoice for £15,000 that covers November and December. That's sat in our accounts. So what we need to do is we need to divide the £15,000 divided by 61 days and that will give us that cost per day so we have 245 pound 90 per day of costs but 31 days of this 50 15 000 pounds above here relates to december so we don't want that in our accounts so what we're going to do is do 245.9 times by 31 and that gives us our prepayment so if we were to look over here at the nominal account, you would see that we had £15,000 in there, but we're taking out the bit that relates to December, which then leaves us with £7,377.10 that just relates to November. And if you were to have a look at the balance sheet, you would see £7,622.90 in prepayments. And if we were to look at this on a T account, which is usually how this is presented, let's make this nice and neat, say this relates to electricity for instance so we would have had the cost fifteen thousand pounds enter from an invoice but here we've credited electricity with the 7622 pound 90 and over here 
we've debited prepayments with the £7,622.90, which means that what we've got left in electricity, so the balance carried forward, is the £7,377.10, which just relates to November. So if we did a similar example, but instead did this for accruals, and we'll change this to being telephone. Let's get rid of all of that there and here. So this time round, our period end is the 30th of September 2020, and we have used telephone costs. The last time we received an invoice, that was up to July 20, and it covered three months. So it covered May, June, and July. So the days in May, June, and July are, there are 31 days in May, 30 days in June, and 31 days in July, so 92 days. The total cost of that invoice was £10,000. So to work out how much cost we had per day, we would do £10,000 divided by 92. So we have £108.70 per day. So if we know that, and we know that we've only had costs in up to July in the year, then we know that we need to accrue for August and September. So if we looked at August and September, how many days are in August and September? Well, there are 31 plus 30. So we have 61 days. So if we know that there's £108.70 pound of cost per day, if we times that by 61, that will give us the total cost for August and September. So we now need to put in this cost. So we have nothing in at the moment for August and September. So let's pop in this accrual. And so with accruals again, we're going to debit the nominal, which in this case is telephone costs in the profit and loss account, is £6,630.43. I'm going to create a liability by crediting accruals with 663043. So in here, you'd also have those costs relating to prior periods. So that the total cost carried forward was £6,630.43. And the accrual carried forward is £6,630.43. So as always, I hope you found this video useful. Um, please consider subscribing and I shall see you on the next video.